sixth grade, module four, lesson 29, classwork. Example, the school librarian, Mr. Marker, knows the library has 1,400 books, but wants to reorganize how the books are displayed on the shelves. Mr. Marker needs to know how many fiction, nonfiction, and resource books there are in the library. He knows that the library has four times as many fiction books as resource books, and half as many nonfiction books as fiction books. If these are the only types of books in the library, how many, types, how many of each type of book are in the library? Okay, so this is gonna walk us through step by step. So it's gonna ask us a lot of questions about this one example. So first thing, it says draw a tape diagram to represent the total number of books in the library. So we know the total number of books in the library is 1,400. So I'm gonna draw a tape diagram that is 1,400. So that represents the total number of books in the library. Now it says draw two more tape diagrams, one to represent the number of fiction books in the library and one to represent the number of resource books in the library. Okay, so, it, so we're looking for resource books and fiction books. It says he knows the library has four times as many fiction books as resource books. So four times as many fiction books as resource books. So one resource book would be equal to four fiction books. Let's try and make this as even as possible. So one fiction book is equal to four, or one resource book is four fiction books. What variable should we use throughout the problem? Well, I would use R are being for resource books because it seems to be the smallest um, the smallest variable or the fewest amount of books. So I'm going to use R to represent resource books because it represents the fewest amounts of books because we don't want to deal with fractions and things like that so write the relationship between resource books and fiction books algebraically so if we know that R is equal to fiction books. So for R, so this is R, so then these, so for R is equal to the number of fiction books. Draw a tape di diagram to represent the number of non-fiction books. Okay, so let's go back to the problem and find where it talks about non-fiction books. Let's see, so it says, and half as many non-fiction books as fiction books. So half as many non-fiction books as fiction books. So fiction books was 4R. So half of that, half of 4R would be 2R. So I'm just gonna draw So we would have a tape diagram that looks like that. So how did we decide how many sections this tape diagram would have? Well, we saw that nonfiction was half as many as fiction. We know Fiction is 4R, so we cut that in half and got 2R. Represent the number of nonfiction books in the library algebraically. So we kind of already did that. We said it's 2R. So 2R. 
because it's half as many as 4R. Use the tape diagrams we drew to solve the problem. So we know that the whole thing, the total number of books, is 1,400. 1400. And we know we need to, ooh, so we have fiction, nonfiction, and resource books. So we have R, we have 4R, and we have 2R, which would be, let's write those. So we have R, R plus 4R plus 2R. So let's represent that. We have R and then a little bit bigger would be 4R and 2R is all equal to 1,400. Write an equation that represents the tape diagram. So I kind of already did. We just need to write R plus 4R plus 2R is equal to 1,400. Determine the value of R. Okay, so we have r plus 4r plus 2r is equal to 1,400. So r plus 4r would be 5r plus another 2r would be 7r. So 7r is equal to 1,400. So we can, we do 7 times r. So to get rid of the 7, we need to divide by 7. And whatever we do to one side, we need to do to the other side. So then just r would be equal to 1,400 divided by 7. We know 14 divided by 7 is 2, so 1,400 divided by 7 would be 200. So r is equal to 200. How many fiction books are in the library? Well, we know that fiction books was 4r, and we now know that r is equal to 200. So 4 times 200 Oops. Four times 200 is equal to 800 fiction books. How many nonfiction books are in the library? Forget how many that was. So nonfiction was half as many as fiction. Nonfiction was 2R. So 2 times 200 would be 400 books, 400 nonfiction books. And then the resource books were, I didn't ask, but resource books was just R. So that would be 200 resource books. Set up a table with four columns and label each column. So I think this part's more of a classwork part, but I'll still, I'll still make up some sort of diagram. So four columns, So it wants us to have fiction, nonfiction, resource, and total. So then let's put our, um, our expressions in here. So fiction was 4R, nonfiction was 2R, and resource was R. Total was 1,400, which makes this as 800, 400, 200. Total always stays at 1,400. Um, we don't, there's really nothing to fill in, in the last column. So again, that was more of a classwork piece. So if you didn't do that in class, um, you can just skip that. Okay. How many fiction books are in the library? So fiction books were 800 books. And here we can just look at our diagram. So 800 fiction books. How many nonfiction books? There were 400 nonfiction. And how many resource books? There are 200 resource books. Does the library have four times as many fiction books as resource books? 
So four times as many fiction books as resource books. So fiction is 800, resource is 200. So is that four times as many? So we can say yes, because 200 times four is equal to 800. Does the library have half as many fiction books as nonfiction books? So half as many nonfiction is 400 half of 800? Yes. So yes, because half of 800 is equal to 400. And does the library have 1,400 books? So basically, does 800 plus 400 plus 200? That needs to add up to 1,400. So 800 plus 400 is 1,200, plus another 200 is equal to 1,400. So yes. Basically, we got the answer right. Exercises. Solve each problem below using tables and algebraic methods. Then check your answers with the word problems. Number one, Indiana Ridge Middle School wanted to add a new school sport, so they surveyed the students to determine which sport is most popular. Students were able to choose among soccer, football, lacrosse, or swimming. The same number of students chose lacrosse and swimming. The number of students who chose soccer was double the number of students who chose lacrosse. The number of students who chose football was triple the number of students who chose swimming. If 434 students completed the survey, how many students chose each sport? So I'm going to start with a diagram or a table. And we have how many new sports? So they were able to choose among soccer, football, lacrosse, or swimming. So I'm going to make a column for soccer, football, lacrosse, swimming, and then also one for total. So I'm going to have five. So we have soccer, football, lacrosse, swimming, and then total. Okay, we know that um, it says the same number of students chose lacrosse and swimming. So lacrosse and swimming tied. So I'm going to give them so each one. So they had the same amount. The number of students who chose soccer was double the number of students who chose lacrosse. So the number of people who chose soccer over here, soccer, was double lacrosse. So what's double of one? So that would be two. So we're going to give that a two. And then the number of students who chose football was triple the number of students who chose swimming. So football is triple this swimming right here. So triple of one would be three. So taking all of those parts, then together we would have two plus three is five, plus one is six, plus one is seven. So now, and we also know the total is equal to 434. So if we can break all of these into equal parts and find the number of students that each one. So let's find the proportion or the ratio that seven is to 434. Let's find what one part of that would be. Let's do 434 and divide it into seven equal parts. So seven can't go into four, but it goes into 43 six times, because six times seven is 42. If we subtract, we get one, bring down the four. Seven goes into 14 twice. That is 14, so no remainder, so each part is equal to 62 students. And since swimming and lacrosse are one part, this would be 62 students chose swimming and 62 students chose lacrosse. Now we know that soccer is double swimming or lacrosse. It doesn't matter. So let's find what double 
that would be. 124, so 124, or I wrote that backwards, 124 students chose soccer, and then three times as many as lacrosse chose football. So 62 times three would be 186 students chose football. Okay, so now it also wants us to do it algebraically. Or what well, we can do, we can make sure it all adds up. So let's let's do that first. So 124 plus 186, that's 10. Oops. Two, carry the one. One plus two is three, plus eight is 11. It's 310, so plus 62. plus another 62, seven plus six is 13, carry the one, so 434, yep, so it all adds up to 434. Okay, so that checks out. Now if we wanted to do this algebraically, what we could do is say that we can use these numbers here that we found, so we can say, 2s, and I'm going to use s to represent the students, so 2s plus 3s plus s plus s is equal to 434. We could put 1s and 1s, but if it's 1, you don't need it. And then 2s plus 3s plus s plus s is 7s equals... 434, and then we would divide. So 7s divided by 7 would be 434 divided by 7, which we already did up here. That is 62, so s is equal to 62. And then you could figure out what 2s and 3s is, just like we did right here and right here, and find the same thing. And so this graph shows how many students chose soccer, football, lacrosse, and swimming, and those are two different ways to solve it. Number two, at Prairie Elementary School, students are asked to pick their lunch ahead of time so the kitchen staff will know what to prepare. On Monday, six times as many students chose hamburgers as chose salads. The number of students who chose lasagna was one-third the number of students who chose hamburgers. If 225 students ordered lunch, how many students chose each option if hamburger, salad, and lasagna were only three options? Okay, so I'm going to start with a table. So their options are hamburgers, salads, or lasagna. So I'm going to make four columns because I'm going to include the total. So we have hamburgers, salad, and lasagna. Okay, so the number of students who, on Monday, six times as many students chose hamburgers as salads. So six times as many chose hamburgers as salads. So for every six that chose hamburgers, one person chose salad. The number of students who chose lasagna was one third the number of hamburgers. So what's a third of hamburgers? So one third of six would be two. So then the total, six plus one plus two is nine. So then our next column, we know that there are 225 students who ordered and we can use that ratio to figure out lasagna, salad, and hamburgers. So let's figure out what one part of 225 would be if we split it into nine equal parts. So nine can't go into two, but it goes into 22 twice, and that would be 18. Bring down the five, nine goes into 45 five times. 9 times 5 is 45, so that's great. We don't have a remainder. 
So one part would be 25 students. So 25 students picked salad. Double of that amount of students picked lasagna. So 25 times two is 50. So 50 students chose lasagna. And then six times the 25, so 25 times six would be, six times two is 12, plus three is 15, would be 150 students chose hamburgers. So let's make sure that all adds up to 225. 150 plus 25 is 175, plus another 50 is 225. So that checks out and it works. If we wanted to solve this algebraically, so we could say for every six students plus who chose hamburgers, plus S, that's the amount who chose salad, plus two groups of students chose lasagna is equal to 225. So then we would have nine S is equal to 225 and we would do nine or 225 divided by nine and we'd end up with the same thing. So there's how to do it with algebra and how to do it in the chart. I think the chart is more helpful. Number three, the art teacher, Mr. Gonzalez, is preparing for a project. In order for students to have the correct supplies, Mr. Gonzalez needs 10 times more markers than pieces of construction paper he needs the same amount of bottles of glue as c construction paper. The number of scissors required for the project is half the number of pieces of construction paper. If Mr. Gonzalez collected 400 items for the project, how many of each supply did he collect? Okay, so he needs markers, construction paper, glue, and scissors. I'm going to have five columns because I'm also going to include total. Okay, markers. Construction paper, I'm going to call it CP. Glue. Scissors. And total. Okay, he needs 10 times more markers than construction paper. So 10 times the markers, so for every 10 markers, he has one piece of construction paper. He needs the same number of bottles of glue as construction paper. So same, thing, same glue as construction paper, so that's gonna be one. And the number of scissors required is half the number of pieces of construction paper. So construction paper, half of that would be half. But you know what? I don't want to have a fraction. So what I'm going to do is just double everything. So one half times two would be one. Glue, one times two is two. One times two is two. And ten times two is twenty. So I just, all I did was double everything to get rid of this fraction because I don't want to solve problems with fractions in them. You can if you want to. I'm taking the easier route. Okay, so then the total would be 20 plus 2 is 22, plus 2 is 24, plus 1 is 25. Okay, now we know that the actual number that he collected was 400 items. So let's figure out what fits in each one. So let's do 400 divided by 25. 25 can't go into 4, it goes into 40 once. We get 150 and 25 can go into 150 six times. And that is 150. So each one, so we would have one is equal to 16. So then double that, 16 times two would be 32. So that you can have 32 pieces of construction paper, 32 glues, and then 20 times whatever 16 is. So let's do 20 times 16. 2 times 6 is 12. Put our 0 down. 0, 2. 
we get 320 markers. Okay, let's make sure that adds up to 400. So 320, I know that 32 plus 32 is 64. So I'm just gonna add those together. And then add the 16. And we do, we get 400, so that all checks out. Now if you wanted to solve this algebraically, you would do, let's go back to this column here. So let's do it in all in relation to scissors. So I'm gonna use S. So 20S plus 2S plus 2s plus s is equal to not 25. We know that the whole total is 400, which then 20 plus 2 plus 2 plus s would be 25s is equal to 400. And then we would solve it the same way that we solved in the table. So the math teacher, Ms. Zentz, is buying appropriate math tools to use throughout the year. She's planning on buying twice as many rulers as protractors. The number of calculators Ms. Zentz is planning on buying is one quarter the number of protractors. If Ms. Zentz is buying 65 items, how many protractors does Ms. Zentz buy? All right, so we have rulers, protractors, calculators, and yeah, that's it. So I'm gonna do four columns because I'm gonna include the total. Rulers, protractors, calculators, and total. Twice as many rulers as protractors. For every two rulers, she buys one protractor, and she's buying a quarter of the number of pro of. Let's see, Ms. Zenz is buying one quarter of the number of protractors. The number of calculators Ms. Zenz is buying is one quarter the number of protractors. So protractors is one, so that would be a quarter. So again, I don't wanna have that be a fraction. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply everything by four. So one fourth times four get to get that to a whole number. So times four, that would be four, times four, that gets me eight. So now everything's a whole number, it's easier to work with. So eight plus four is 12, plus one is 13. So we have 13 parts, and we know that the entire thing is 65 items. So let's figure out what part of 13, if we take 65 and break it into groups of 13, how much is in each group? So 13 can't go into six, it can go into 65, so let's try something. Let's try 13 times, oh, I don't know, let's try five. Three times five is five, or 15, carry the one, five times one is five. Oh, got it on the first shot. So it is five. So each one is five. So we would have five calculators. To figure out protractors, it would be four times five, which is 20. So we'd have 20 protractors. And rulers, eight times five would be equal to 40. So 40 rulers, and 40 plus 20 plus five does equal 65, so that checks out. Okay, if you wanted to solve this with an equation, I'm gonna use this and our total here. So we would have, I'm gonna base it off calculators, one C. So eight C plus four C, plus C 
is equal to 65. So 8 plus 4 plus 1 was 13C is equal to 65. And then you would solve it the same way we've been doing. So 13 times C divided by 13 would be equal to 65 divided by 13. So C was equal to 5. And then you plug in all of that to solve the rest.